Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I am so excited to share with you my most romantic fragrances. So I've got six here to share and I'm not just going to share the fragrances with you. I'm going to share the romantic scenario that comes up in my head. Now when I think romance, I'm not thinking guy-girl romance necessarily, although there's a couple of them, I think. But I'm thinking more along the lines of just romantic, romantic situations, wistful, uh, whatever. Like, so just some sort of like, like the fantasies in my head, you're going to get to hear them. So I hope you like that. I hope you enjoy. Before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? I would love to have you part of the community. And if you already are part, thank you and welcome back. And let's get started. First, uber romantic fragrance I have for you is Mongerlon. This fragrance is a beautiful, sweet, uh, feminine, classy uh, fragrance. It's got a few different florals in there, which you definitely get, uh, but kind of the star of the show is this soft kind of vanillic lavender. When I was growing up, my mom used lavender products. So as a kid, I always thought of my mom when I wore lavender products, and now that I am a mom, I think of my son because I use lavender products on him. So anyway, love this fragrance. Now when I smell this, um, th there's a whole scene that comes to mind. So I imagine this beautiful woman, long blonde hair, but she's kind of pulled it back into kind of a loose knot at the back of her head. She's got tendrils coming down. She's wearing this beautiful white flowy kind of dress. It's got sleeves kind of like this. Uh, she's wearing a straw hat. She's got sandals on and she grabs this basket and she opens up the doors to her beautiful stone cottage in the south of France. So you've got the white uh, around like all the, the windows, uh, stone walls, and she's got these beautiful French glass doors that go onto this gorgeous veranda. It's a beautiful warm day in the south of France. She takes her basket and she goes for a stroll down this path that leads to this beautiful hill. Like she's on the top of this hill and all she sees are these rows and rows of lavender. So she begins to walk through those rows of lavender and she's picking lavender and putting it in her basket. Her sun hat is beautiful. There's a bit of a breeze so you can smell the lavender on the air. Uh, you can almost smell the warmth of the sun. Kind of radiating off the earth. You smell a little bit of the florals around and that's what Mongrelon reminds me of. Whenever I smell this then she comes into the house, she cuts it up, she starts doing cool things with the lavender because this woman knows her way around a lavender plant. <laughs> but anyway that's the whole scene that comes up like I just love this one. It's warm, feminine, classy, it's sweet, but not too sweet. Now, some people find that the lavender note in this one is a bit much, uh, maybe even a little bit uh, masculine. So if you're not a lavender fan, steer clear from this one. This one also has some, I think, anise or licorice in it. So there is that quality to it. It is slightly masculine. However, I find this one extremely feminine, like not even unisex, but feminine. Uh, so yeah, I love this one. It's sweet, it's delicious, and so, so, so romantic. Next uber romantic fragrance is Scandal à Paris by Jean-Paul Gaultier. This fragrance, there's some sort of similar quality where it almost, these fragrances, some of them, have almost like a fuzzy edge around them. Like, I don't know what that is, but this one is no exception. So uh, Scandal at Paris, it has pear in the opening. There's jasmine in this one and honey. And I find this one like really quite sexy, but very sweet. And what I think of, I don't know why, but um, not too long ago, I started watching Emily in Paris. And just the idea of the old world Paris, uh, so like the stones, cobblestone streets, the old buildings, walking through uh, Paris in the summertime in that old historic part. Uh, there's little kind of street vendors and you stop and literally smell the roses, continue on, the birds are singing, the butterflies are flying, you know, that whole kind of thing. That's the, the, the vibe that I get from this one. It's sweet, uh, the pear kind of makes it fresh, the jasmine, I think it's jasmine that's in this one, 
Uh, you know, it's a little bit indolic. The, the honey is a bit syrupy. So this is a very, I think, beautifully balanced fragrance. It's a little more youthful, uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, it just gives me uh, summertime in Paris vibes. Not that I've ever been there, but that's what I imagine. Stopping, getting a baguette and some delicious croissants, and then go hit, heading here. And also, for whatever reason, I was so in love with the visuals of Emily in Paris, just the colors in the show, the outfits that they wore, like some of the show I didn't really like, but like the colors, the just the the setting, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, that's what Scandal at Paris reminds me of, and I just think it's such a beautiful, youthful, decadent fragrance that's, that's uber romantic. Next fragrance that I'm going to share with you gave me a whole entire vibe, but I don't have a full bottle yet. <laughs> and it is Boucheron's Quatre. Now this fragrance, I talked about it recently, it's like a, a, a citrus watery rose with some sort of extra sweetness kind of thrown in the mix. The, the vibe that I get is uh, it's summertime and you live in a very large, again, stone uh, English manor this time. So it's the English countryside. You're in bed, it's early in the morning, you can hear the rain kind of falling on your roof. You get up, you get dressed, go downstairs and you're in kind of like the sitting room Again, the walls are kind of stone or like they're stone parts. Looking out onto the window, it's a beautiful English countryside scene that you're seeing. So you curl up in this uh, big, beautiful, comfy chair with a book. Maybe you're doing some journaling. You've got a cup of Earl Grey tea that you're just kind of nursing on and there's a fire going and it's damp and it's cold, but you feel all cozy because you've made yourself cozy. So this goes on for the morning and then all of a sudden the rain kind of stops and the rain was kind of a misty rain that was coming down. So the rain stops, you open up the window and you just get this beautiful waft of fresh green air that comes out from the rain. You know how, how the earth, like when you go outside just after a rain and the sun comes up, it just smells so amazing. So you're so enthralled with this beautiful, beautiful smell from outside that you go outside, you get on your majestic horse. You've got this very spirited thoroughbred horse. You get on the horse and of course you're wearing the English riding outfit. And this is my fantasy. So basically you snap your fingers and boom, you're dressed for the occasion. And you go, you get on your big, strong, majestic steed and you go for this massive gallop. You're riding through the countryside and because it's just rained, it's still kind of wet. So your hair is getting kind of wet and wispy and, uh, but you're just smelling the fields and you're smelling the roses and you're smelling uh, the, just the, the, the rain. You're smelling the rain. That's somehow what this reminds me of. I don't think it smells like rain, but there is this watery, rosy, uh, sweet, juicy component to this. Anyway, that's the scene that it gave me. You go on this r long ride, you come in, you're kind of just done, but you've had such an amazing day and you've just enjoyed the smell of the earth, basically. Somehow, Boucheron Quatre, that's what it, that's what it gives me. Okay, moving on. Next fragrance, it's kind of a departure, but the next fragrance that I think is uber romantic is actually Dolce Garden. Now this is a completely different fragrance than the other three. This one's a little bit more smooth. There's a waxy quality to this one. It's very sweet and syrupy. Uh, there's a bit of coconut in this one. It's got magnolia, there's beeswax, a few notes like that. But what this reminds me of, like even the color of the bottle, as you can see, the color of the lid, it's all part of the, the visual that I get. So you're on a tropical island and the color in the island, it's almost like you're on a different planet. So the way the sun radiates and with the, the water around, you, there's this beautiful kind of glow everywhere. So you, you know how sometimes after a big rain you go outside in the sun and the way it's kind of uh, 
you know, hitting the, the water particles in the air, the light just looks different. It looks kind of glowy. Well, that's the same thing with this, except uh, it's just this beautiful kind of golden coral type glow that's everywhere. It's, it's just magical. So you're walking down this path and you've got this beautiful kind of uh, tropical floral crown around your head, you're barefoot and you're walking, you've got a, a, a bikini on and some sort of sarong, all quite colorful. You're walking on this path and it's just beautifully carpeted somehow uh, with moss so it doesn't hurt your feet. <laughs> All of a sudden you come to this, it's almost like a veil of these white flowers that are, are falling down all over. And it's like a canopy of trees with this veil of flowers. And so you, you go like this and you pull the flowers back and you walk in to the most glorious, again, it's lit so amazing. And it's, it's like this lagoon with this waterfall falling, just beautiful. And there's all these turquoise birds just kind of like flying all over the place. And the water, it, it, the water looks like it's glowing. And it looks, it, it looks almost like the color of this juice. That's what the color of the water and the waterfall is looking like. It's so beautiful. And so you take off your sarong, you dive into the water and the water is as warm as a bath and you come up and you smell the flowers and you smell, uh, you smell flowers, you smell coconut, you, you just smell this magical place. And then even the fish are just kind of frolicking around like I see dolphins, like that kind of thing. That's the vibe that I get from this one. It's just awesome. I love it. I love this one. It's so nice. It's relaxing somehow to me. And I totally want to visit that world someday. <laughs> the next one I've talked about it. I've given you a little bit of a scenario in the past, but I'm going to elaborate a little bit. So it is Terracotta by Guerlain. This one to me is old, old world romance at its finest. There's something about it that, that, that is so sexy and intoxicating. This is the most sophisticated summer beach or resort type scent uh, I've ever smelled. I think that this is beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. So the story that goes with terracotta is um, you're a beautiful heiress. You were born in the 1940s, but you kind of are spirited and do your own thing. So you decide to go to this beautiful, um, this beautiful hotel slash resort. I don't know where it is. Like it's somewhere on, a, on the island, I think, but it's not necessarily tropical. It's more almost Mediterranean, but it's still lush. That's the thought in my head. So it's this beautiful, it's my story. I can tell it however I want. I can make up places, sure. So this is just the most beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a decadent place to go stay. And she stays there for like two months in the summertime. Like she goes and she summers there. So she's got lots of friends and whatnot, but she's a bit of a loner, a bit of an intellectual. And she uh, stays in the hotel. She comes down every morning and she has her breakfast on this stone terrace. Uh, she can hear the ocean, but there's a beautiful garden kind of around her. She finishes her, her delicious breakfast, you know, something, uh, some sort of quiche with her uh, coffee, whatnot, something not too heavy. Anyway, she then makes her way down to the beach and she's got a scarf on her head. She's wearing like a white bathing suit, but she's got some sort of cover up on it. And so anyway, she goes, she lays in one of the chaise lounges that are uh, provided on the, the beach and there are these umbrellas and there's staff out there to wait on you as you're out there. And so she's just basking in the sun, just ex just enjoying the warmth of the sun. And she's got terracotta on and the warmth of the sun and her skin and the smell of, uh, smell of the fragrance. It's just beautiful. Like she just feels so relaxed. So you've been laying there in the sun for a while. You get up, you start walking on the beach and, and all of a sudden, there's this man that starts walking towards you. He's wearing white linen shorts and a white linen shirt and it's kind of half buttoned. Walking with his sandals in his hand, just walking along the beach, allowing the waves to splash on his feet. You guys meet and it's love at first sight. From that moment on for the rest of the summer, 
you two are together. You spend every waking minute together. You guys go on road trips. You take the car. You go driving down the coast. You just experience everything that the island has to offer. Last day, you guys are holding each other in embrace. And then he pulls out a ring and he says, I can't live without you. And so you marry him. You end up in England. And he, he happens to be a self-made gazillionaire. And you guys just live really well. <laughs> Like it is, it is a storybook romance, man. And you guys just love each other. Like it's, it's a passionate, fiery love that just never goes out. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, anyway, that's it. moving on. Before I do the very last one, I do realize that this is kind of different. Maybe you guys hate this. It's a little bit embarrassing actually, but I really do think of these scenarios when I wear these fragrances and I wanted to share it with you because Maybe you think of scenarios too. One of my wonderful subscribers, her name is Julie, she actually said something that meant so much to me this one time. She, um, she said, now when I pull out my fragrances, I ask myself, what story am I gonna wear today? And I really love that. Like, what story do you wear? Anyway, last fragrance. Whew, are you ready? <laughs> It is Santel Royale by Guerlain. Guerlain just makes beautifully romantic fragrances. So this one is another uber romantic fragrance, although this one uh, is way more unisex and definitely uh, uh, on the sexier side. So this one I've talked about in the past reminds me of Catherine Zeta-Jones in the movie Zorro. Uh, that's kind of the feel I get. Old world, old world. Well, let's pick. Let's face it, everything for me is old world. But anyway, <laughs> okay, this one, this fragrance, there's rose, there's oud, there's kind of like a sandalwoody quality. So it's like this smooth, woody, rose, delicious. It's just, it's just delicious. I think there's cinnamon in this too. So there's some spice. So just absolutely beautiful. So Santal Royale by Guerlain. The woman of this story, she's got long, dark, wavy hair. Now her story began years and years when she was just a little girl. And her and her family were traveling by boat on the sea. And unfortunately, there was a huge storm and everyone went down with the ship except for this little girl that was stuck on this little, little plank or whatever. So she's floating around in the ocean and a pirate ship comes and they take pity on this girl and they bring her into the thing. The captain raises her as his own daughter. And uh, from there, she learns the ways of the world. She's well-traveled, well-spoken, speaks many languages. Her father taught her how to blend in with the rest of society. So she has graces, uh, but she also is a major, uh, she's a major baddie and she can hold her own with a sword with any guy that comes her way. So she ends up taking over the ship as captain. This, the, the crew love her. She's living her best life, but there's something that's missing. Like no matter how much treasure she finds, she's always feeling wistful and there's just, she just, she, there's something that's missing there. So uh, she decides she wants to take a break. She gives her crew a massive holiday. It's like, take some time off. They found a massive treasure takes some time off that she takes her her pirate ship and just heads off into the sea she finds this little island in the middle of nowhere it's it's not very big but it's quite lush there's a beautiful white sandy beach and she thinks i'm just going to spend some time here i just want to be alone i've never been alone in my life want to spend some time alone still feeling like something is missing so she goes, she, she anchors the boat, she goes to this island, she starts to explore, she's enjoying her life on the beach. You know, she sets up a little shanty for herself, enjoying life on the beach. Then she decides to go exploring in kind of the rocky, more mountainous area of this, this island. So while she's exploring, she's on this big rock and all of a sudden her foot gives out and she ends up falling onto kind of this weird little cliff le at ledge and there's really no way to come up like there's kind of moss on on all sides of the cliff so she can't actually grab it anywhere to climb up uh, and she's just stuck on this thing she's thinking to herself well i don't know maybe i'm just gonna die here 
So then it starts to pour rain. So she's like just soaked in rain. And of course she has that white kind of blouse on with her situation. Anyway, vast whatever. So she's uh, looking raggy in the rain. All of a sudden she hears this man going, are you okay? And she looks down and there's a man, he's got kind of long, dark hair, similar to hers, but not as dark. And he's got a beard and stuff. And he's got this white, like billowy shirt, same sort of deal. And so he goes, don't worry, just stay put. And so he goes, somehow he gets to the top quite quickly. He lowers a rope down, he brings her back up and they lock eyes and it's just like electricity electricity so he invites her back to his establishment he got stranded there years and years before but again because he was so innovative he's a bit of a science guy uh, he had like all the food he needed to eat he had built a, a, a thing he'd rigged up all sorts of uh, crazy contraptions so he could kind of get anywhere in the island so anyway he pours her a beautiful a uh, big glass of mead or some sort of delicious sweet liqueur uh, and they sit there drinking and eating the the meal that he prepared for her that he'd roasted that he'd killed himself <laughs> and basically he joins her on the ship and they just uh yeah they live their best life too yay and that's it those are my stories a little bit crazy i hope that you liked this i feel a little bit embarrassed i feel a little bit weird I, I kind of feel a little bit shy. I hope that they're not too cheese ball for you, but those are the romantic images that come to mind when I smell these fragrances. What about you? Do fragrances evoke uh, any sort of images for you? And if so, what's the fragrance that evokes the most mood for you and what is it? I would love to know and so would everybody else. Other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.